Hello, it's Thursday! So today, at the request of my patrons, we are going to be making a pangolin. Okay, so if you're just interested in the pattern for today, you can jump to this timestamp here. It should be marked in as a chapter for you as well to make it a little bit easier. But for the rest of you who might be interested in like the journey of arriving at this little pine cone, I really feel like I learned something about my own design philosophy over the last two weeks. I kept making what I thought was a pangolin, only to have it turn out as a not a pangolin, and I just couldn't work out why. I was looking at a lot of reference photos, I have drawn literally dozens of them, and it's just nothing was really working. But then I realised something. So when I design, I tend to pick a couple of distinctive features from the creature and then like amplify their proportions a little bit to like amp up the cute. But this time it wasn't working, and I've narrowed it down to two reasons. So one, the proportions of a pangolin are so specific it isn't recognizable if you mess with them. So for example, a pangolin always has a tiny pointy head and really little eyes. And to make something cute, you give it a big head and big eyes. And two, I kept isolating features that weren't unique to a pangolin. Seriously, look at this. I picked spines and claws in an anteater type shape and it became an echidna. That's an Australian hedgehog for anybody who doesn't know, or without his scales, a niffler. So after that, I picked a long nose and tail in kind of like a curled up position, right? Like, pangolin, no, goanna, instant goanna. And that's a, a big lizard. I'm sorry that all of these seem to be Australian animals. <laughs> and then, okay, so in desperation, because we are a week and a half into a project that would normally take me three days at this point, I was like, fine, I'll just do a long nuggety form, right? Pangolins are very nuggety creatures. I'm just like, that will have to work. It's kind of a default position. I didn't really finish this one, but it turned into a dinosaur, okay? We've got a very dino-esque aesthetic happening there. Ironically, an echidna lizard dinosaur is probably exactly how I would explain a pangolin to anyone who didn't know what one was. Either that or use interpretive dance. Anyway, those are the three variations that didn't get frogged. So this has been going on for literally weeks, and normally I sit down and design a project and it takes me one day, but like two weeks in, I still didn't have a design. So I just kind of had to like put aside my, my the way I would normally approach things and put aside my pride and just try and make something that looks like the thing. And that's how we arrived at our little pine cone here. <laughs> so I understand that it may not be what you expected from this, this particular prompt. It's not what I expected either. But I do feel better equipped now to handle it next time something comes along with like non-traditional proportions. And I will be adding pangolin to my list of designs that I want to revisit in future. It's keeping company with the owl bear and the howling wolf. <laughs> Now, for anyone who became attached to the Echidna Niffler one or the Lizard Boy, both of those, like, I mean, those body bases are too good to, to not use. So both of them will be their own patterns in future. I just need to decide what kind of features to add to them to, like, really define what they're supposed to be. For now, let's move on to tools and materials. So for today's project, you're going to need 8-ply 100% acrylic yarn in one colour. I recommend only using one colour for this particular pattern just because the way we're doing the scales, occasionally the base will peek through and it becomes way less obvious if you're using all the same colour. You're also going to need a pair of 9mm safety eyes, your 3.5mm hook, a pair of scissors, pins and needles, and some stuffing. Now you'll see here that I've also got some stitch markers laid out. That is because we need to reattach a couple of times to form our scales as part of the body. And it can be easier to identify where to actually reattach our yarn if we've marked the stitch. But that's it. A written version of this pattern is going to be made available to my patrons, but I don't think I'm going to list it in my Etsy store at this point in time. That might change in future. I will leave a link in the description down below for anybody who is interested. So today's pangolin's made in one long kind of diamond-ish shape from nose to the tip of the tail. And then we make his arms separately and his legs separately. Now, all of the scales are attached to the pieces that they're on top of, except for these two. So there's one here on one side of the leg and one here on the other. Now, I'm actually going to start with that piece today, just because it's a little bit of a taste test for what the rest of the pattern is like. So if you have a really bad time making these two little scales, you'll know that this pattern is potentially not for you. Save you from um, a lot of pain later on. So grab the colour that you're going to use, and we're going to start by chaining three. So that's the base of our scale. Now I am going to chain three more and turn. So I've got three along the base of the scale and then three up at a right angle. And then starting in the fourth chain from our hook, we are going to double crochet two stitches together. So how we do that is you yarn over, insert through that chain, yarn over and pull up a loop, 
yarn over and pull through the first two stitches. This will leave you with two stitches left on your hook. You're then going to yarn over, insert into the next chain along, which should be the middle chain of the three at the base of your scale. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Then yarn over and pull through the first two chains on your hook. So now what you've got here is you've got your starting three chain and your, your initial active loop. And then you've got sort of two half formed double crochet stitches. So I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. So there what we have is our starting chains and then we have our double crochet two together. We are now going to work a picot. So for anyone who doesn't know, a picot is when you chain three and then slip stitch into the first chain that you've done. Uh, but I think the real trick to it is when you make that first chain, don't pull it super tightly. And then you work two more chains and I pull those quite tightly like that. So we've got one big one and then two really tight ones. Then you insert your hook back through that first chain that you've done, yarn over and slip stitch into it. So there is our little picot. So that leaves us with one spare chain in our base, but what we're actually going to do is another double crochet two together. So this might actually be easiest to illustrate with the diagram. So we have our starting three chains, making the base of our stitch. We then chained three and turned, so that's these ones up the side. We then double crochet two together. So we put one in here and one in here. And that's the symbol for it, I believe. <laughs> we worked our picot, which there might be a symbol for in, in charting, but I only know I chain, I chain and I chain and then sort of slip stitch back into it. So like just pretend that's a, a beautiful picot. And then we're going to be working another double crochet two together. And how we're going to work it is our first one's going to go in this middle stitch again. And then we'll be working our second one in that final chain like that. So I'm going to yarn over, insert back through that middle chain, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through the first two. So there's the start of that first double crochet, then yarn over and do the same thing in that last chain along. So we are back at the point where we have sort of two half formed double crochet and then our active loop, yarn over and pull through all three. And then I'm going to chain three, just just evenly. They don't need to be pulled super tightly. And I'm going to slip stitch into that first chain of the base. So that is the equivalent of doing this. One, two, three, and then slip stitching back into this one here. I am then going to finish off. So we only need to make two scales this way. I'm going to just walk through a second one now that you've sort of gotten a little bit more of an idea. So we start by chaining three, which is one, two, and three. Then we chain three more, turn, and starting in the fourth chain from our hook, we double crochet two together. Like so. We work our pico, make sure that that first chain of the three is not too tight so that we can fit our hook through it comfortably. So there's the pico, and then we double crochet two together again, starting back in that middle stitch we've already worked into. Like so, and then chain three, and then slip stitch into the first chain of our foundation to lock it down. So we'll be doing a lot of these in the front loops of the main body piece in different sizes. So this one here is the double crochet size. We'll be also working them with triple crochets as well as half doubles and single crochets. So there's a bit of variation, but these are the only two scales you'll have to sew on individually. So now you've made those, we're gonna pop them to one side. So next up, we're gonna form this main long sausage. So we start at the tip of the nose and initially we're just gonna be working up a pretty basic cone. So grabbing my yellow again. Now the instructions start with a magic ring of four and I'm really sorry about that, but it really is the only way to get that nice pointy nose that we, that a pangolin just really needs. So there we are at the end of row six, we've got this little cone worked up. So in this next row, we're going to be building the first little forehead spike. So you can see on here, hopefully, uh, that he has some really small forehead spikes and then they kind of get bigger and bigger and bigger as we head back into the big fluffy scales. So these first ones are formed in like as part of the base row and then later on we start working in front loop and back loop. So for this row what you're going to do is start by working two single crochet like so. 
Then we're going to work a pico. So we've just done those for the scales, but basically that means chain three. Again, I do the first one kind of normal and the next two really tightly. Insert my hook through the first of the chains and then slip stitch. And then without skipping any stitches or anything like that, we're going to finish the row with eight single crochet. Like so. So that tiny little, tiny little bump is our very first scale. So in the next row, we're going to be working something similar again. So you're going to start with a single crochet. So just one this time, then pico. And then we're going to work two single crochets. So the first one is going to be really easy to identify. It's just these two loops on your right hand side, if you're assuming you're right handed, of that first pico, like so. But the next one is actually these two loops on the far side of that pico. We don't actually work into the little loop itself. We're working on the far side of it. And this can be a little tricky to insert your hook through. So uh, having done a lot of these, I've kind of come up with a couple of different strategies for how to do this. Yeah, the easiest way I think is where I literally just insert my hook as per usual. So it looks like the pico is going to fall behind the stitch. I make sure that when I'm yarning over, I'm yarning over from behind that little pico bump. Pull up my loop and then I just poke the pico to the front and finish my stitch, which should help it stand up a little bit as well. So there are those two stitches. And now we're going to pico again. Like so, and then single crochet to finish those two pico scales. Now, just before we finish the row, I do want to point out that for this pattern, it's it can be really helpful to remember, for example, that you've got two stitches between these two picots because otherwise it can easily kind of get confusing as to whether or not there's two, three or four. So in the next round, just be careful to only work two stitches between these two scales. So now we're just going to finish off that round with two repeats of an increase, single crochet, and then an increase. So that's one, and I'm going to do those three stitches again on this side. So there we are at the start. Now counting the available stitches can be tricky again, just because of these little picos, but you can always refer back to the previous line of instruction. So that row we just did, we know that we started with a single crochet and then a pico. So we know that we should have a single crochet to work in here before we're working into the two between the two picots. So it's just a matter of like referring back to the notes and just paying really close attention to them. Okay, so now over the next four rows, we're going to be working two more rows of pico stitches. Our next one starts with a pico straight away. Yes, that word is going to lose all meaning for you by the time we finish making this pattern. And sadly, it has no abbreviation. So it is literally typed out in full in the pattern. In case you're getting confused, it's the one spelled picot. So there's my first pico, and then we have two single crochet. So as I mentioned, we have one before the pico of the previous round, like so. And then the next one is going to fall in the first stitch between the two of them. So insert my hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, poke the pico from the previous round to the front and finish the stitch. I'm then going to work a pico, like so. And then two single crochet. So again, we've got that other one between the two from the previous row and then the first one on the other side of that one there. And then we have one more pico for this round. Like so. And then a single crochet. And then you finish off the rest of the round as per usual. So there are multiple sets of brackets on this row. So all you need to do is just work it one step at a time. So the first one is two repeats of an increase and then a single crochet. So you work both repeats for six stitches in total, like so. And then you work your second set of brackets, which is two repeats of a single crochet and then an increase. So you'll note that the instructions have been kind of flipped for the other side. And that's just to help us balance out the shape at the underside of the head. And finish off with a single crochet. There we go. So that is what mine looks like at the moment. And you should note that your picots are forming this kind of little pyramid shape where you've got one, two, and then one, two, and three. So if yours does not look like that, I'm going to hazard a guess that you've 
missed a stitch or added a stitch around the, these initial picots. And you might want to think about using your stitch markers a little bit more heavily than I am. So just marking the single crochets on either side of each pico might help clarify that if yours doesn't look nicely balanced at this stage. So the next row is a nice easy one. We're just going to work 18 single crochet around. So that's two between the first two picots, two between the next two picots, and then 14 around to complete the row. Like so. So with only single crochets in that last round, it's the perfect time for you to do a stitch count and make sure that you've got 18 around. And I do, thankfully, the number of times I had to frog that blue one. There is no shame in frogging a work because you don't have the right number of stitches and that, that's all there is to that. So the next row is the last row of doing picots like this. So if you're hating this, you've only got one row to go, just power through it is my recommendation. So we start with our picot. Then we're going to work two single crochet. And then pico. Then you're going to work a single crochet and then an increase. And then two repeats of a pico and then two single crochet. There's our first one. There is our second one. So you'll note that our, our picots appear to be like sliding off one side of the head at the moment, and that is fine. You're then going to work a single crochet and an increase, and then five single crochet and an increase. And then you're going to work a final pico. And two single crochet to finish the round. Okay, so that is the last pico we're gonna work for a little while. So you worked five picots in that previous round. The middle one should fall basically centered with the top of the head. You'll note that we're building out a little bit of this under chest area. It's actually gonna sit flat-ish on our final design so that this is actually curving upwards. And so we're just going to work a pretty normal row of four single crochet. Then two repeats of an increase and then six single crochet. and then an increase and two single crochet to finish the round like so. So there we are at the end of row 12. So at this point I am going to stop and pop my eyes in even though I may not lock them in at this point. So with pangolins you'll note that their eyes are quite low to the sides of their head. They do not have predator hunting eyes in my opinion. So count backwards to one, two, three, row four, row five, that kind of general area. You should very easily be able to tell what side is the top and what side is the bottom. And I'm just placing my eyes in sort of evenly between the top and the bottom on each side. So at that point you just move your eyes around a little bit until you're relatively happy with their location. So there's not a lot of room inside this head and so you can maybe see the stems in there. I can tell you from experience that there is still room to snap the backs on these eyes anyway. There we go. So I'm fairly sure that I like my eyes there. And I am going to snap my eyes on now just because the opportunity is presenting itself. So how I'm doing that is I'm poking one eye out so that I can get to the stem. Snapping the back on, popping that one back in, and then manipulating it around so that the second 
stem po pokes out. You will not be able to get both out at the same time on this particular piece. And snapping that eye on too. Then just tucking them both back inside the head. Now, I probably won't be able to get any stuffing in on the other side of that. That's fine, there's not a lot of room for stuffing there anyway. Okay, so we're about to start row 13 and from here on out we're going to be working parts of certain rows in the back loop only to leave the front loop free to attach the scales later. Now, if you're more experienced and you're very well versed in reading patterns and the kind of nonsense I tend to do with them, feel free to work the back loop and the front loop in tandem with each other. For today, I'm going to work the whole piece with just the back loop showing, marking the starting point where I'm going to reattach to form my scales, and then afterwards we'll come through and we'll do all of the scales. So I'll work the first row with you, and then the rest kind of follow on very comfortably from each other. So the next row starts with working in the back loop. Um, I haven't explained this yet, but basically for all stitches you've got a front loop, and you've got a back loop. So whenever you see a pattern marked BLO, it means back loop only, uh, just like FLO is front loop only. And I believe that that is standard notation. <laughs> so for the next few stitches, we are going to be working back loop only. And we're going to start with working five single crochet. Like so, so you'll see there that you've got those front loops that are being left free then an increase. Now I won't be using invisible increases in this case just because we are back loop only. And then four more single crochet. And then we're going to swap to working in both loops. Now you'll note that our back loop stitching kind of stops in line with this arc we're drawing with our scales. That can sort of help you keep things in alignment. So working through both loops now we're going to work three single crochet. An increase, and I am using an invisible increase for that one there. More out of habit than necessity. Then seven single crochet, through, still through both loops. And an increase. And then we're going to finish the row with two single crochet in the back loop only. So one and two. Now this is the moment where if you're going to be using your stitch markers or bobby pins or little an extra piece of yarn, mark the outermost back loop. So that of those final two that we did, I mark the first one. So it's the one closest to the right hand side if it's facing you, closest to the left hand side if it's facing away. Because when we come back to attach the scales, that is where we are going to start that row of scales. So that's the end of row 13. So now I'm just going to continue on and build up the rest of the body, working in the back loops only where indicated, working through both loops where indicated, and just marking the outermost back loop on the right hand side when it's facing us uh, for the rest of the piece. Okay, so here we are at the end of row 22. You'll note that I've got those back loops clipped off and you'll note that there's a big jump between two of these rows where they're kind of sticking to the top and there's a sudden stagger. That's because this whole area is covered by an arm and then a leg. And so you don't need to like build these scales into the body. So that's the reason why there's that jagged cut on, on, on both sides really. So I've stopped us here because we're going to stuff it really quick before we continue to work on into the tail. So you are going to want to make sure that you stuff this quite firmly. Um, I understand that the stems of your eyes are going to stop you like stuffing too much into the head. So don't worry about that too much. Just stuff as much as you can. So now that we've stuffed him, we are going to basically continue on and work up the base of the tail. All right, so we're just at the end of row 27 here. I'm going to stuff what we've done of our tail there. Um, just as a side note, stuff the tail as you go from here on out. I won't stop and give the instruction again. 
And from here, we're actually going to be doing a little bit of trickery to curve the tail slightly. It's no, no post stitching or anything like that. We don't want any kind of extreme curves, but we do just want a very gentle slope off to one side to give it just a little bit more personality. So the way we're going to be doing that is by loading slip stitches on one side and half double crochet on the other, which is why I thought I'd stop and walk you through one of those rows. So at this point in time, you should have 10 stitches available around and your active stitch should be somewhere along the side of your pangolin. So this row starts with four slip stitches in the back loops only. And I do want to warn you to work those slip stitches very, very loosely. We are going to need to work into them in the next row. So do not under any circumstances pull those slip stitches tight. We're working this whole row in back loop as well. You don't need to swap between. Then we are going to work five half double crochet again in the back loops. So half double crochet is when you yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. You've got three loops on your hook there. Yarn over and pull through all three. So it's kind of like a single crochet that's been given a little bit of extra height. So how this works to curve the tail is it means that one side of the tail is going to be slightly longer than the other side of the tail, which is going to innately help it curl around a little bit more. So there's five half double crochet and then the row ends with a final slip stitch. So we're going to work that exact same row again, but this time we are working through both loops. So working through both loops of the slip stitch in the previous row, which is exactly why we needed to leave them nice and loose and open. And then five half double crochet. Uh, if you find that the slip stitches in the half double crochet is too complicated, too hard, or they're just sort of messing up the overall flow of your work, just skip them and do single crochet instead. It just means your tail will end up straight. So there we go. So you'll be able to see um, the angle that that's starting to form just because we've done really short stitches on one side and the really long stitches on the other. So that is giving us this little curve that's going to be a nice, gentle, organic curve. Okay, so we have nine rows left to go and we're just gonna finish those off now. And then we're gonna finish off So you'll note that we've got quite a significant opening at the end of that tail. We are just going to work our little reverse magic ring. All that means is we take our tail of yarn and we weave it through. And by that, I just mean pull it through, through the front loop only of each of the stitches around. And pull it tight to close. And then we tuck that end away inside. So there is your body. So just so you can get some idea of, of the shape of this, uh, his tail is not up in the air. His tail is flat on the ground. So there is our pointy little tadpole. At this point, we're going to pop him to one side and we're actually going to swap and work up the arms and legs and then come back for the scale. So our arms are in the same yellow. So they're a little hard to spot on our finished piece here because they have their scales attached. But if we look at sort of the prototype that became the pangolin, I'm sorry that he is naked. You can see that the arms have this flat edge Excuse me, sir, may I borrow your little arm? Thank you. So this is the shape of his little chicken wing. Now you'll note that he has a flat end on this side. We're working in nice vertical rows and then the hand kind of sits at a different angle. So we're actually making this little squiggly shape. So grabbing my yellow again, we're actually going to start by chaining seven because we're starting at the back of the arm and then working towards the front. So there is our seven stitches. That final chain was our turning chain. So we're just going to rotate our work so that we are looking at the first few chains. And what we're gonna do is work 12 single crochet around the entire outside of this chain. So to start with, second, starting in the second chain from my hook, I'm going to work six single crochet along the top. And 
like so. I am then going to rotate it completely. I'm not chaining or anything, I'm just rotating it completely so I'm looking at the underside of those chains. And we are going to work six single crochet along the bottom. Like so. So that gives us our round of 12 to work into. And you'll note that what I've just done there is I've folded the two edges up together to give me kind of this little lip that I'm going to work around. And the next stitch that I'll work into is going to be that first single crochet that we did. Now if you're unsure of where exactly that is, just because we are at sort of the end of the piece and it can be a little confusing with the chains, count backwards from your hook. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12 to identify your 12th stitch. So from there it becomes a little bit more standard. So we're going to work five single crochet. Like so, then a decrease. And then five more single crochet. So that's what our piece currently looks like. So that's kind of the shoulder side of the arm. So the next row is worked basically the same, except we're working in the back loops only. So four single crochet. And then we're going to single crochet three together. That just means that I'm going to pick up the next three back loops and work my decrease. And then four single crochet, again, back loops only down the other side. So, so you'll see that gives us this row of front loops that we'll be using to form some scales later. So for the next row, we're back working through both loops. Now there is a difference between your left arm and your right arm, and I'm going to start with my right arm. So we start with a single crochet, then we work a pico. <laughs> I know you missed them. Then a single crochet, then a pico. And a single crochet. We're going to single crochet the next three stitches together and then work three single crochet to finish the round. So the right arm, as you can tell, is going to have these on the outside and the left arm, we, basically the difference is that we're going to work those picots on the other side of the arm to uh, have them on the outside on the other side of the body. Okay, we're going to work seven single crochet around. Being careful not to like add any additional stitches just because there's picots in the mix. Okay, like so. So I still have seven stitches around and you should count and make sure at this point. Now we're just going to work up the little hand or the little claw thing. So start by working three single crochet. Then an increase which should, which should fall kind of at the top edge of the arm. And then three single crochet. Then we are going to work a decrease, four single crochet. and a decrease, six single crochet around. Just as a note, we are not stuffing this piece at all. We want it to sit relatively flat the whole time. And then our final row is three single crochet, a decrease, and then a single crochet, leaving you with just five stitches around and we are going to finish off. Now you might look at this piece and be like, hang on, that doesn't look like anything. And that's because it all comes together with a few final tweaks. So the first thing we are going to do is, first thing we're gonna do is work our remaining tail through the remaining stitches, through the front loops only, then pull tight to close them off and tuck it away inside the arm. And then what you're going to do is, the arm is going to sit very flat in a certain direction. You're going to pinch and hold it that way. And then you're going to pinch the hand in the opposite direction. So you've got your arm flat in a vertical position and then your hand flat in the horizontal position. And that is how we get this kind of little claw shape with the two little scales showing on the arm there. And we'll be attaching some more scales down those front loops in a minute. So there's your first arm and you should make your left arm now. So just like that. So pop those to one side as well. And we're just gonna whip up the feet really fast. Now there is absolutely nothing fancy about these feet. They don't have their own scales. So uh, 
just um, I'm gonna pop the pattern up on the screen and you should make two of them. So there are our two little feet and we're just going to pull in all of our pieces now. So these are what you have. So basically all we need to do now, so basically we have kind of two steps remaining. The first is attaching our scales to our arms and body. And then the second is a little bit of sewing to assemble everything. So for now you can pop your two scales and your two feet off to one side. And we're going to start with the arms just so that you can get a feel for how we're going to work through these front loops and get a little bit of practice before we start working on the body. Okay, so in both of these instances, there is a clear top and a clear bottom to the arms. So you need to identify the front loop that's spare on the top side of your arm. And we're going to start by slip stitching into it. Like so. We're then going to chain three. And we're basically going to form a scale using these front loops the same way we were using the chains from our original example. So we're going to start with a double crochet two together. And the first stitch is the same one that we slip stitched into. Like so. And the second stitch is the next front loop along. And then finish that to get our little loop. We work up co, same way we've been doing this whole time. again like so then we're going to work another double crochet two together with the first stitch that we're working into overlapping with the last double crochet that we just did and then the next one along and then chain three and slip stitch into the same front loop we just worked a double crochet into so there is our first scale and now you should see three more front loops available on that side with the final one sort of curling just under. You're going to work a second scale in those three loops. So there are our two scales. Now the reason that they are shaped like that and attached just to the back of the arm is because it's going to help this arm blend in with the scales that we attach on the body. So I'm going to take these two ends and just weave them into the arm itself. And we're going to repeat this process on the other arm. So I'm just going to work up the other arm now. You are also more than welcome to just make the scales as individual pieces if you found it easier to start with a chain. You will just have to sew them on if you do that though. So there are our little arms. We can pop those to one side with the legs. And now the real work begins. Okay, so the time has come to attach scales. Sorry, it is several hours later. I needed a break before we at <laughs> attacked this particular bit of it. So we are gonna start from the tail and work upwards. So what you'll note here is that we have scales in a couple of different sizes. So we've got some really little ones, we have some much bigger ones, and we have some really, really big ones. Well, really, really, it's all relative, attached to the back here. But we have 13 rows of scales to do in total. And we're going to start with these ones here at the tip of the tail, which I have marked here. I'll keep doing little diagrams. I think that might maybe help. So this first row of scales should be relatively easy. So they are completed kind of over just two of our front loops. And how it works is we're going to put a single crochet and then a picot and then a single crochet in the same stitch then slip stitch into the next stitch and then repeat that across. So this next one will have a single crochet, a picot and a single crochet. We should have seven front loops around to work into and we are going to pick the six that sit across the top. So how we're going to do that is trace down the middle of your pangolin until you identify a loop that's on the top and then count three loops down the side and that is going to be our starting stitch. So I'm gonna start with a slip stitch. So I've slip stitched there to join and then the next loop around, I'm going to work 
my first scale. So single crochet, pico. And then single crochet and then slip stitch into the next one. So there is our first little scale. I'm going to repeat that twice more. And then slip stitch in that final stitch and finish off. Now I'm going to advise for you to weave your ends in as you go. So each each line of scales should leave you with two ends. I'm going to trim mine off at about an inch long each and then tuck them down the tail. All ready to do the next line. There we go. There are our first scales. Okay, so row two of scales. We should have eight front loops around to work into. And this time around, we are going to be starting with a slip stitch again like we did last time. Then working two single crochet into the first front loop, doing our pico and doing two single crochet into the next front loop and then slip stitch and we're going to basically repeat this section around. So the first time our scale took place kind of over two stitches and in a repeating pattern this time it's taking place over three stitches in a repeating pattern so you'll still use the same kind of center front loop and this time we're going to count four down the side so one two three and four and that's our starting loop this will get a little bit easier once we're sort of done with the tail and we've moved on to the body because the body has really clearly defined starting points for our scales. But honestly, with the tail, you can get away with being a little bit messier. So I've slip stitched to join and then I'm going to work my scale. So it's two single crochet in the first one. And then we work everybody's favorite stitch now, the Pico. I'm going to have to call him Pico the Pangolin. <laughs> And then in the next front loop, we're going to work two single crochet again. And then slip stitch in the last one. So that slip stitch is technically the start of the next repeat. You'll see there that it's giving us this lovely little curly scale, which is a little bit closer to how pangolins look, and it should be lining up pretty nicely with the one behind it on the tail. So I'm now going to repeat that twice more. So there is my third scale. You'll note that these scales wrap the whole way around at this point in the tail. And then to finish off, I'm going to slip stitch into the same stitch I slip stitched into to start. Just because there was only eight stitches available and technically repeating three stitches three times is nine. <laughs> so there is the end of round two of our tail. For row three of our scales, we're going to have nine loops available to us, but we're only going to use six of them. So we start with a slip stitch and then we chain two. Then I don't know the symbol for a half double crochet. We are then going to work two half double crochets in the same stitch we slip stitched into, work our pico, and then work two half double crochets in the next stitch, and then chain two again and slip stitch into that second stitch as well. So the entire scale is contained within two loops. We'll then repeat this process, so we'll end up with three scales in total. So I'm identifying my middle of the back stitch, again, just tracing down the center of the pangolin and then counting three off to one side. And that third one is where we're going to start. So we're going to slip stitch in there then chain two. And then we're going to work two half double crochet all in that same loop. So a half double crochet is when you yarn over, insert your hook through the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. So you've got three on your hook in total, yarn over and then pull through all three. So I'm going to work two of those in that front loop and then pico and then two half double crochet in the next front loop along. Then we chain two and slip stitch in that same front loop. So that is what our little scale looks like. You'll note that it's just a bit bigger than the ones we did the previous row and then bigger again than the one we did the row before that. So I'm going to now repeat that process two more times. Go. Oh, now we get the satisfaction of removing a stitch marker and tucking in our ends once again. So you'll see immediately that these scales are adding quite a lot of bulk to the body, which makes sense when you see how sort of chunky he turns out. So for round four, we are going to be working three scales again. And what that's going to look like is we're going to do a half double crochet scale the same way we did in the previous row. 
And then we're going to be working our first double crochet scale. So a double crochet scale is the same kind of scale that we've made two of that are separate. So they shouldn't be too alien to you. They need three loops to work. And I suppose I've got my little diagram here already, but basically we're chaining three, then working a double crochet two together over stitches one and two, then working our Pico, and then working a double crochet two together over stitches two and three. Then we chain three and slip stitch into stitch three. And then we'll be doing another half double crochet scale. Again, same as row three on the other side. So we've got sort of small scale, medium scale, small scale. So identify roughly what is your middle of the row loop, then count three. And that is your starting loop for this row. So I'm doing my half double crochet scale first. So that was my slip stitch and chain two, then a half double crochet twice. and pico and then half double crochet twice in the next stitch chain two and slip stitch into the same stitch so there is our first little half double crochet scale the same as we did in the previous one then we're going to slip stitch into the next one chain three work our double crochet two together and then our pico then our second double crochet two together then chain three and then slip stitch into the same front loop so there's our first double crochet scale added to the body. And then we're gonna work one more half double crochet scale on this side. And then finish off and tuck our ends in like we've done with all the other rows so far. So you can see here that our pine cone is coming along quite nicely. And we're going to do row five the exact same way. So half double crochet, double crochet, and then half double crochet. So there we go. You should note that we've got this bit of a bald spot under our tail, but the top is looking lovely and lush. So for rows six and seven, we're going to be working three of the double crochet scales next to each other. So you should be fairly familiar with that kind of scale by now. So you once again, just identify the middle front loop of the row and then count four front loops off to the side. And that will be your starting point. And we're going to work both row six and row seven now. So there are seven rows of scales <laughs> making up his majestic tail there, which has its nice little swoosh to it. We are now heading into the body and we have six rows of scales to go. And honestly, the rest of this should come pretty easily to you. So for row eight of the scales, we are going to work the biggest scale of them all. There is only one of them in the entire pattern and it is a triple crochet scale. So it's essentially the exact same as a double crochet scale. It's just you chain four at the start and end and you will be doing triple crochets instead of double crochets. So the next row of scales is a double crochet scale, a triple crochet scale, and then a double crochet scale again. So for row nine, we are going to be working six double crochet scales around, uh, just the exact same way we were working them in row six and seven, so with no extra gaps in between. And you'll note that this particular row of scales does curve 
more around the side than the others. That's because this is the first row of scales that will sit behind the leg. And that will help you position everything when we do our assembly in a minute. Like so. Okay, we are coming up to the final few rows of scales now. Tell you what, I uh, could not be more excited to work on literally anything that isn't a pangolin at this point. So in row 10, we are going to be doing the exact same thing again, working five double crochet scales. Okay, we have three rows of scales to go. So for row 11, we are working double crochet scales again. This is our last row of double crochet scales. So try to enjoy the novelty of it while it lasts. And we are simply going to work five of them across. Okay, two rows of scales to go. So for both row 12 and row 13, we're going to be doing the same kind of a single crochet scale. And it's going to take the form of... So single crochet. Pico. And then single crochet into the next stitch. And then slip stitch into the next stitch and then start again so you single crochet in the in the in the next pico single crochet and then slip stitch so there will be five of those along row 12 and four of those along row 13 There we go. I've missed a couple of uh, ends here, so just make sure all of your ends are tucked in. And uh, give your scales a quick brush in the right direction. And now we are ready for assembly. So I've laid all of my pieces out here, and I'm going to grab my pins. And we're just going to pin them in place, and then, and then obviously sew them on. Okay, so grab your body, and the first thing we're going to do is pin on our legs. So I've added a little bit of stuffing. I've concentrated that just in the sole of the foot and left the, the top part of it relatively open so that I can squish it. That's because we want this bit to sit relatively flat against the body. So you'll note when you look at the scales, you've got one row of scales that kind of comes down around the belly a little bit more than the others. And significantly more on one side on this one here. I think I might have counted one of my rows wrong. Uh, but all I'm going to do is identify that row of scales and put the squished side of my leg against the body just in front of the longest scale. Or, or for this one here, it's gonna to have to be a little bit more over, but you know, common sense applies here. So what I'm gonna be doing is giving you sort of a basic starting position for your limbs. And then what you'll need to do is sort of look at it and then move it around so that it best suits the, the pangolin that you're making. So there's my first one. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. This scale is way, way, way too low. So I'm gonna place this leg completely in front of it, making sure that it's balancing with the one on the other side. Like so. And he should be able to stand up on his own at this point. He's gonna be a little bit back heavy because we haven't attached his arms yet. But in general, he shouldn't wobble from side to side. So with those on, we're gonna grab our arms next. Now keeping in mind that those two smaller scales are going to be facing outwards, so you've got a clearly defined left and right arm. What you're going to do is fold those two bigger scales back so that you can see kind of this flat edge of the arm. And you're gonna line that up with the edge of your scales. So the top corner of mine is lining up with that, that row of sort of smaller knobs. And then the long end is lining up with one of the longer scales. And I'm pinning that flat edge down, not the scales themselves. 
and then folding those scales back just to make sure that they are aligned nicely with the rest of the scales of the body. Now, when I sew these arms on, I'm going to be sewing on along this edge here, and then I'll fold those scales back again and just give a little stitch to the top edge of that one there and then the bottom edge of this one here to just encourage them to stay in that flat position while still allowing them to stand out from the body to blend in with the rest of the scales that we have there. So that will kind of be like there and there. So that's the first arm and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Fold the scales back. Check that his arms look right from the front, and that you're happy with it from kind of the other angles, which finally brings us to these leg pieces. Now I encourage you to sew all of these pieces on first, but uh, just due to the workflow that I'm working in at the moment, I'm gonna show you where to pin these on, and then I'm gonna take this away and sew all of the pieces on at the same time. There's no right or wrong side to these scales, so pick the side that you like the best to face outwards. And all we're gonna do is line this scale up with the row of scales the leg is lining up with, and use it to cover the little bald spot where it's connecting with the body. So it's going to be sewn half to the leg, half to the body. Or you can leave them off altogether as well if your pangolin doesn't have a receding hairline. So that's where I'm putting that one there. See how it's going to fit between the scales of the body and the scales of the arm. And it just fills that little gap in to give you a little bit more of a seamless appearance. And same thing on the other side. So we have less of a bald spot on this side than I had with the original blue one. But I'm still just going to pin this on Again, half to the leg, half to the body, and it's going to just hide the seam between those two pieces, like so. All right, so I'm just gonna sew all of these pieces on now. And there is your finished pangolin. I hope you had fun watching me make one today. I'm highly doubtful that anybody will ever wanna make one of these. <laughs> So next week I'm going to be attempting a squirrel and currently I'm torn between wanting to make something adorable because I feel like it's been a little while since I hit that note or um, making something a little bit tricky because I have an idea for something that could be really fun. So I'm going to resolve that, but in the meantime, I'll see you next week. Okay, bye!